Good morning, everyone. My name is Joy Means. I'm with Davidson County Transportation Fleet Maintenance Division. Most of you know me. I've done this class for you all before. And I miss seeing everybody, but this is the best we can do at this given time. So I just wanted to remind you that the class is winterizing your vehicle. Most of you know how to do this as much as I do. You've been doing it for a long time. But this is just kind of a reminder on in bad weather and winter, what you need to do for your car to get it ready. Okay, we're gonna start off with, um, there are a lot of outlets out there for information. And I don't know about y'all, but the older I get, the more hands-on I wanna do. <laughs> and so, let's just start with uh, some of the things that we need to keep our eye on and to check out to winterize our vehicle. You need to, uh, okay, changing your oil. That is the life of your vehicle. You need to check your owner's manual and see when you need to have that done. We suggest every 5,000 miles. Some of the new dealerships and brands want you to do it every 7,000 or every 3,000. So check your owner's manual to see when you need to do that. But to let you know that on your oil, you really need to check that because in colder weather, your oil gets thinner. So, and the next thing is your coolant. If you're doing, if you're adding a lot of water, if you have an older car and you're adding water throughout the winter, you really need to get that checked out to make sure you have enough coolant in it and not just water that can freeze up. Okay, check your battery. If you don't have a tester, the, all of their automotive parts, Advance, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, they will check your battery for you. Uh, and if you don't drive as much, but you have a vehicle and you want to keep it in good running order, the best thing to do is at least start that vehicle every week and even drive it around the block because sitting in one spot is not good for your tires either. And, you know, things will dry rot if they just sit. So it's always a good idea to, you know, run that vehicle at least once a week and around the block. Okay, some other things we want to check is your windshield washer fluid. They have windshield washer fluid now that is will not freeze. And one of the suggestions, I always, I always keep uh, rubbing alcohol in my emergency kit because if you're out stuck on the side of the road and you run out of windshield washer fluid, you can add water and add that rubbing alcohol and it won't freeze. Okay, uh, and also, this is something new that they have added. They have windshield wipers now that will not freeze. You know how like when you go out in the morning there's ice all over your windshield? Well, these and your old windshield wipers will be stuck in the ice. They won't move. Well, these new ones won't freeze up like that. And it's always a good idea to take rubbing alcohol and wipe down your windshield wipers because it cleans all the buildup on them off. I always suggest keeping an emergency kit. And a lot of people don't think about this, but being older and starting to take medicine that you have to have, always keep you when you go out in the wintertime a couple days of medicine in your pocketbook, in your glove compartment. I mean, not to leave it there because you know the cold weather is going to affect it, but just to have it in case you get stuck somewhere. It's always good to be prepared. Well, prayer, what is the saying? Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Okay, I want to show you there's a few tools out there. You know when you broke down in the past, you'd have these uh, these triangles. These are the old true and tried and true that you would put around your vehicle. Now they have more modern technology that where you have lights that will strobe. Uh, you, of course, you've got your flashers on your vehicle. Um... In your emergency kit, you need a battery, a jumper cables or a battery charger. Well, I don't know about you, but you know, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's hard feeling safe to ask somebody to give you a jump. So there are things you can buy now that aren't that expensive. Now this is an older one and it's a, a more heavy duty than what you would need for your vehicle. 
but it is so wonderful. You charge it up. This thing will charge your battery, your cell phone, uh, uh, even your computer. You take it, you plug it in, you turn it on, and it becomes just like having another car to jump your car off. This will start your vehicle. I mean, it's charge, as far as charging up your battery to start your vehicle. And like I said, the great thing about it, it comes with attachments that are, will work on any phone, any computer. So they're good to have, especially if you're out in nowhere and you have no way to charge your phone because you don't want to do it with your vehicle because it's going to run your battery down. Okay, um, having an ice scraper is always good. Having a first aid kit. Flashlights. I'm going to tell you some safety features that we, the county even gave us on one, one year for a safety thing as having one in a vehicle has saved lives. This is what you would use to break your windshield if you were ever in a mishap and couldn't get out your doors. So it's great to have. Uh, you don't think it would be much. This one also has a seatbelt cutter. So if your seatbelt got stuck, you could cut it off of you. But the great thing about this is you don't, you don't have to have a lot of pressure. If you'll notice on the tip of this, there it comes to a real sharp point. That's the reason when you hit your windshield, it's actually going to break. Most of the time it's going to spread and they have that safety glass where they're not going to cut you what's not supposed to cut you. <laughs> okay, and having a, a first aid kit for the winter time, you want to have uh, some kitty litter or sand, even a shovel. I carry a, a two by four in my vehicle to get to help you get traction. But, there are a lot of websites that will help you and give you information. And of course, there's always how-to videos with Pinterest and YouTube. But like this that I've been using, and you can always get a handout. You can ask, call your senior service person for it, and they'll get you a copy. That It's just a reminder. That's all we all need sometimes is just a reminder on what we're doing or how to, to keep doing it. Because, you know, we, we, we think we drive it every day, that we know what it's, our vehicles are doing or what we've done to them in the past. Well, it doesn't hurt to get them checked for the winter time. I mean, a lot of uh, mechanics uh, would even tell you that, you know, it's going to save you in the long run. It's going to help you with not having as many breakdowns. It's going to keep your vehicle running when you're hit bad weather, if you get stuck somewhere. And another thing is your tires. You know, they always say to put uh, snow tires on. Well, we don't live in a place really where you need snow tires unless you're up in the mountains. But it's good to have an all-weather tire that has good traction. And you know the secret on the checking your tread, right, is to put uh, a penny in your tread with uh, the head down and if it is below the top of Lincoln's head, then you need to have your tires checked. And as far as auto parts and auto repair mechanics, ask your friends and neighbors. They are your best reference on how they were treated, how good a service they got. Uh, I, you know, everybody says check the, the references on the website. Well, you don't know if somebody's telling you the truth or not, to be honest. So ask your friends and your neighbors, your family members, and they'll tell you, they'll help you find the best mechanic out there. Because being a woman, I've always felt like, you know, I wasn't listened to or uh, paid as much attention to when I went into a garage. Well, I'm a backyard mechanic. I grew up with my grandpa, my dad, my great uncles, all working on vehicles and motorcycles. So, this class is just to give you a reminder. Like I said, most of you have been doing this as long as I have, if not longer. So we're just trying to help you out to give you a reminder on what you need to do to get your car ready for winter. Now remember, changing your oil is the life of your vehicle. 
and doing it on a regular basis. Because when you go to take your car in for oil change, they have what they call a multi-point inspection, where they're going to check all those things you need to check to winterize your vehicle too, all the time, whenever you get an oil change. Like checking all your uh, hoses for cracks, frays, all your wires for the wrap being cracked or frayed, um, your coolant level. Um, mine just went blank. <laughs> Uh, they're going to check your brakes, you know, your rotors. That's not something you you would do if you knew how to, unless you knew how to do it. Um, they're going to check your headlights, the wiring, the harnesses, because you know a lot of times that's when when your headlights go out. It if it's an older vehicle, well your harnesses burnt up. A friend of mine just had to replace hers. Uh, now remember on the newer model cars, they're not as easy to work on as the older cars used to be because so much of them is computerized. And always check your owner's manual about that. Um, they have tools that they can hook up to your computer, to uh, your car's computer, that gives them codes to give them an idea where to start when fixing a problem. Okay, a few things I wanted to go over is, um, on your batteries, most batteries now, they, they don't want you to add water. They don't even have places where you can add water like the old ones used to. Like I said, any of your auto parts places will test your battery. In your first aid, in your um, emergency kit, like I said, always have like jumper cables or get yourself a self-charging battery. They're worth their weight in gold. Um, because, like I said, if you get stuck out in the middle of nowhere, especially if you're on a secondary road, it's bad weather. Not many people are going to come by. And I want to share with you something I learned just a couple years ago. You can call, if you can't get a record service, you can call your state police. And they will come out and assist you. And if they call a record, they have to show up. So just to give you that information, of course, you can always call uh, information to get the local police or even look it up online on your phone. Uh, as, like I was talking about on all the sources that you can look up, uh, DMV also has, uh, has a winterize in your vehicle. And when I tell you about testing your oil, checking your oil, and servicing your vehicle, and your coolant. Well, you need to check all your fluids. Make sure your brake fluid is up to the line of the, the little container that holds it. You can see through that, it's, it's like a foggy, white colored. So you can see if it's up to the line where it needs to be. Uh, and like I said, we don't really need snow tires in North Carolina, unless you're living in the mountains. And nobody uses chains anymore except maybe EMS or emergency services. Um, all the places that you can find information shows you on winterizing your vehicle. Uh, Kelly Blue Book has one. The Consumer Reports has one. The DMV.org has one. And we'll be sure to put this up on where you all the information on this video so you can access these websites. And like I said, there's always how-to videos for even checking your oil, your um, coolant, uh, your brake fluid. There's always videos on Pinterest or YouTube for that. And like I said, in the wintertime, one of the most important things you need to have in your vehicle is an emergency preparedness kit. I know you hear that whenever we have a crisis and people only think about that when we have like a hurricane or flooding or, but you should have one in your car. I keep one in my vehicle for every season because you don't always need the things in the summertime you're going to need in the wintertime. Like in the wintertime, you're going to need a shovel for snow or kitty litter. In the summertime, you might need a battery operated fan because, you know, if your vehicle stops running, you're not going to have any air conditioning. And as far as like heat in the wintertime, they have these things, they're called hot hands. You take them out of the pack, you shake them up. They work 
kind of reverse of the old cold packs, and they warm up. Well, they're great to put in your gloves, in your boots, to help keep you warm. I ride motorcycles, and this, I, in the winter time or the fall, these things are wonderful to have. Uh, you want to have a poncho for rain. Uh, and if you don't have a poncho, you can take a trash bag and take the end of it and cut you some arms out, and then you have a poncho. Um, I bought something at one of the stores a while back. It has, they fit on the bottom of your shoes and they got little spikes for walking in ice. Great to have. Another thing to help keep your shoes dry. If you don't have galoshes, take a regular store bag, plastic bag, wrap it around your feet. It'll help keep your shoes dry and your feet dry. I don't know about you, but when my feet get cold, I'm cold. Always keep bottled water. Uh, if you're a diabetic, you need to keep like your emergency candy stash or even extra insulin in your vehicle. It's always good to have those things. And each person's different, so each person's needs are going to be different. So remember, pack the kit for you and your family, what you need. Uh, and even like I said, in all these, they have emergency kits on how to make them. Uh, Flares. We don't really use flares anymore. They have these like strobe lights at your auto parts stores. They're not that expensive. Blankets, uh, boots, a radio that works, which most of us with our cell phones, we have access to a radio. That's the reason you need like this charger for when your vehicle is not working, you can still charge it up. And it also helps if you've got to call somebody. Um, like I said, the triangles, we don't really use those anymore, but you can still buy them at the auto parts stores. Come on. Um, like I said, the washer fluid, the coolant, the flashlights, that's all stuff that you need. If you got pets and you take your pets, have dog food or cat food in your kit for them. And like I said, I always keep one of these store bags, you know, in my car full of water. It always comes in handy. I hope I've helped you remember to uh, winterize your vehicle. And if you ever have any questions, like I said, I'm with Davidson County Transportation and Fleet Maintenance Division. My name is Joy Means, and I'm glad you joined us today. Thank you.